Well, it is going to be a good one. I'm excited. It's time for seasons and signs in the heavens. Stay with us. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the beginning of the last days. My name is Laurel Ann Tatter Thompson, and uh, I am so thrilled to be with you. It is Monday. Happy Easter Monday. It is not happy holidays. It is happy Easter Monday. At the end of the show, we're going to show you a video of uh, a discussion that's been had where, you know, the Brits are kind of upset because there was a big deal made of uh, Ramadan and, uh, you know, all these lights were put up on their parliament buildings and basically nothing for Easter. And I, I want to I wanna show the discussion that happened because I kind of think that maybe Christians get out, outshone by those who are willing to put their faith and their funds and their passion behind their beliefs. And, you know, I don't know if we always do that the best, but we'll talk about that near the end of the show. Um, I'm also going to uh, be, you know, uh, talking as well a little bit about what's going on in Canada. And there's a huge problem with our prime minister and uh, his basically designated people wanting to push hate speech, this hate speech bill that in Canada could land me in jail for the rest of my life. So... I prophesy that I shall never be put in jail, but rather shall have abundance and shall speak the mighty and powerful words of the Lord. Every day we like to get started um, by reading from my dad's Bible. I miss him so much. This Bible is well over 50 years old, and thank goodness that it was real leather bound because it's being held together by some very good, some very good uh, you know, string inside of there. But my dad, um, on so we only read what he underlined and he left this Bible with something pretty much underlined on every single page. So it's just a treasure to my soul. Um, in Proverbs 4, it says, enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away for they sleep not except they have done mischief and they and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. That's what we're up against. I just thank you, Dad, for showing me that, uh, that we are not to walk in the way of the wicked. Now, who is the wicked? Well, there's some things going on. We've got an incredible pastor, and he's coming right up. Before we get to pastor, uh, I love his name, Steve Chocolanti. And I hope that I'm saying it correctly, but uh, he is absolutely amazing. He's written seven books. Uh, he's originally from Australia. He's come to the United States and he's talking about end times. Now, you've heard about this eclipse, April 8th. Well, let's hear what Pastor Chocolanti has to say about it. Now, also happening, do you have my share here, JT? NASA is to launch a uh, to launch sounding rockets into the moon's shadow during the solar eclipse. <laughs> Should we be doing anything more? Like if there's an eclipse, maybe we should just like leave it. Like don't do anything else. Let's just watch that and hope that the world isn't sucked into something. I don't know. I'm being dramatic. Okay. Of course, I'm just being dramatic. NASA will launch three sounding rockets during the total solar eclipse on April 8th, 2024 to study how Earth's upper atmosphere is affected when sunlight momentarily dims over a portion of the planet. Oh, help me. Help me, Lord. Okay. The other thing, very, very interesting, right? I don't know if you've been following all that goes on with CERN, but um, so CERN, as you might, let, let me just explain to you something very interesting about CERN. CERN was created on September 29th, 1954. Okay. I want to talk to you about times and seasons because 1954, isn't that exactly how many years to till now? Is it 70 years? 
a 70 year cycle, 54 to 24. Um, okay, so in 1954, the day of the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah. Um, so CERN was created September 29th. Like, I want to show you before we bring our epic pastor on today that times and seasons matter, dates matter. So this accelerator report, this is right from CERN's own website. As you may know, CERN is about 17 miles of all of these tubes underground. What do they want to do? All kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, they mess with um, like smashing protons and nuclear, I don't know, maybe I won't talk because I don't know if I'm saying it right. So beam commissioning is progressing well across the entire accelerator complex with the initial completion achieved in the first machines of the chain last week, the first uh, physics experiments started in the east area behind the ps and others will follow shortly so i don't know what they're talking about just to give you an example though this is march 28th 2024 this is exactly what they're doing okay i want to go down to the end if you want to read about it just look up cern and look up some of their latest postings all right here's what they're doing exactly on march 8th okay april 8th sorry april 8th on March 27th, beams entered into test collisions at the target energy of 6.8 TeV in the LHC. These were not yet stable beams, which meant that the experiments did not take data. Collisions for physics uh, at 6.8 TeV are expected to take place on April 8th. So let me just give you uh, a little sample. Let me see if I can uh, find this where... Um, the gentleman from, let me see if I can, uh, I had it right here, guys. Give me a second. I might have to go through a couple of these to, okay, here it is, JT, on the share. Get this. So this is the director of research at CERN, all right? So, you know, when we start messing with things that God uh, never intended us to be messing with, when the Tower of Babel was built, for example, uh, God did not like it. Man gets in himself in all kinds of trouble, right? Men and women, let's say. We do things that we shouldn't be doing. So the director of research of CERN, this is what he says regarding what's going to happen on April 8th. Something may come through dimensional doors at LHC, and out of this door might come something or we might send something through it. Sergio Bertolucci, I just ask you to please, Director of Research and Scientific Computing at CERN, please don't. <laughs> please don't open any doors to anything. I mean, I don't know if I want to believe in all that stuff, but then we know in Revelations, there's some talk, uh, you know, we'll, we'll like maybe look that up later, but there's some talk about how there's an unleashing, there's an opening. Um, so I hope that they can't do anything, but I know a lot of you follow what's going on at CERN. So we'll leave that there. I want also to just say, is Trump not the best? So this is sta a statement from Trump's uh, campaign on Joe Biden's blasphemous declaration of Trans Visibility Day on Easter Sunday. Um, so I don't know if this will get us uh, a, a problem with uh, YouTube, do you think, JT? I mean, it's just Trump saying, listen, it's appalling and insulting that Joe Biden's White House prohibited children from submitting religious egg designs for their Easter egg event and formerly, formally proclaimed Easter Sunday as Trans Day of Visibility. Sadly, these are just two more examples of the Biden administration years long assault on the Christian faith. So, like, what's happening? Do you think that they are, uh, you know, coming against us? Do you think that is what is actually going on? I don't know. And I'll just remind you as well that when you do look at CERN, uh, right here, JT, if you show that, um, that thing, CERN is 666. That's another thing I wanted to show you. Okay, you can get that taken off. Um, something weird's happening. You know, the Bible does say that the enemy has his seat uh, where... 
it, it's, um, it's called Where Satan Lives, and I once did a study with you all on that, and it's basically over there where all this is going on. Uh, so does Satan actually dwell somewhere near CERN? I don't know. Is he in the Biden White House right now? I don't know. All right. So before we get to anything else, I want to share with you um, a couple of things. Uh, I think that this is it's really neat to know that it matters about times and seasons. And I was really shocked by a teaching that basically I saw with, um, it was with Jonathan Kahn, and I want to show you something. And our pastor today is going to go into the times and seasons, and he's been writing about it. This is epic. We cannot be blind. We cannot shut ourselves down to what the heavens are telling us, to what the time is telling us now. So listen to this. This is very interesting. He wanted to um, uh, let us know. Let's see. All right. All right. So. Um, here we go. There were very important dates. Um, back in January of 19... Uh, uh, of 19, no, 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 it was, hang on, hang on, okay, okay, January 20th, 1970, do you know what happened? When the bill to legalize abortion uh, that would lead to Roe versus Wade was prevent, was presented before New York legislator, um, the, the, the bill that would, um, legalize it was on January 20th in 1970. Sorry, guys, there's something I'm trying to ex express. So January 20th, 1970, the bill to legalize abortion was presented, okay? In January 20th, 2020, all right, that's the exact day that the plague was declared to our world of the pandemic of COVID, exactly 50 years later, okay? Another really strange coincidence. In March 11th of 2020, uh, they declared it an official pandemic. They first knew of COVID though and, and, and proclaimed it on January 20th, but then March 11th, um, they proclaimed it. If you go back 50 years to March 11th, 1970, that's the exact day that America began killing its children with abortion. March 11th, 1970, okay? So March 11th, 2020, the plague begins, all right? Now, this was researched and presented very deeply by Jonathan Kahn to the exact days. On April 10th, 1970, um... Okay, is the day that New York legalized abortion on that exact day, April 10th, 1970, the legalization of abortion, of abortion begins, all right? And so 50 years to the exact day later uh, is when New York City, the very place where abortion was legalized, New York City is now experiencing the deaths. And in that three-year period, they had 1.3 um, uh, million deaths of COVID people. Guess what? In the three-year period after 1970, uh, when they commissioned abortion would be legalized, in that three-year period, there was 1.3 million abortions. Those are the numbers. And 50 years later, 1.3 million deaths from COVID. Now, in leading up to, and I want to show you a quick video and then we're getting to our guest. In leading up to Trump putting into place the final Supreme Court judge that would bring about the end of Roe versus Wade eventually. Uh, 
in the years before that, Jonathan Khan had felt that they needed to have a meeting that would take place. And they wanted to, to gather and they wanted to um, be on the, the mall. And so it was September 25th that they decided that they were going to gather all the people of God. And they decided that several years earlier. And I want to take you to this clip now. Without knowing it, Trump on that exact day was going to be announcing at that exact time where the people of God are meeting who the final Supreme Court judge would be, which is Amy uh, Coney Barrett. And that was being instilled as the people of God were praying on another part. And they had no idea it would be all happening, but it's also a special season. So look at this. Take a look. But now, so we are on the National Mall with God's people praying, Lord, and we're praying about this. And Trump is at the White House, same day. Now, the ancient sign of God's power is the shofar, the trumpet. By the shofar, if you were battling, you're in a battle, he said, blow the shofar, blow the trumpet, and you're going to win, your enemy. You're going to win against the enemy. When the shofar sounded, the walls of Jericho came come trumpeting down. When the shofar sounded, it was the year of Jubilee you get restored. And this is actually the year of Jubilee of abortion when we had this. And I was led for months that we had to seal the prayers at 5 o'clock that day, 5 p.m. on the National Mall with the sound of the trumpets of God. So I said, we got trumpets. You got a shofar. Come on up. And so I said, get ready. And I said, everybody, when you hear the sound of the, sh of the shofar, when you hear the trumpet, shout the shout of Jericho to God. From here, and Lord, we, as we seal the return and the power of God, now, Lord, let the sound of your power go forth to the world. And yet, Jesus, Yeshua's name, go. I stand before you today to fulfill one of my highest and most important duties under the United States Constitution, the nomination of a Supreme Court Justice. Isn't that absolutely phenomenal? And so I'm, I'm quite convinced that God is large and in charge. And although these days bring us many, you know, and much cause to be concerned, it's so interesting that 50 years ago they decided that they were going to come against humanity and basically become like Moloch and begin taking the lives of babies. And 50 years later, as everything's being put in, the people of God, just like the children of Israel in days of old, are sounding the shofars. And I have a beautiful shofar, so I'm kind of, uh, you know, I think it's kind of very cool. Now, in light of this, how important it is that days matter, that seasons matter, that God wants us to be like the men of Issachar, the, the sons of Issachar, who knew the times and seasons so that when this thief in the night shall take us, we're not going to be as those who do not understand. And if there's anything that I feel commissioned to do, I had a very powerful time with God this last weekend, Easter, Easter Sunday, the greatest hope of all time. When he arose, they never found his body. Thousands saw him alive after that brutal beating. We watched the passion of the Christ, my husband and I last night together to see that brutal beating that Jesus took. But in all of this, the signs and the times are important so that we know what's happening. And when I start the show and I say, welcome to the beginning of the last days, I, sh I think I should say the middle of the last days because I think we're closer than we think, I really do. All right, so I would like to introduce to you someone amazing and that is uh, Pastor Steve Chocolanti. And he's a, a Christian author, prolific teacher of God's word and senior pastor of Discover Church in Melbourne, Australia. Oh, see, I think I went to, to fix this with him because he's now over here, I think. We're going to hear about it. Okay, so with over 50 million views, he's one of the most watched Christian YouTubers worldwide. And he has pioneered online church uh, even before the, the lockdowns we went through. He has authored hundreds of DVDs and five number one best-selling books. 
And Pastor Steve has traveled in over 46 countries as a popular speaker, biblical tour leader in Israel, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and a guest on international TV shows, including on Daystar and uh, all of those networks like that. And we just want to welcome him. Pastor Steve, thank you so much for waiting in the wings. I hope that I've just, you know, not uh, exhausted you, but just given you a few things that are happening because you as well are talking about these incredible things. Tell us about yourself. Well, Laura Lynn, it's great to be with you. You All the stuff that you mentioned, um, it's very important. And um, Canada is in my heart, by the way, because uh, I spent a couple of years of my life in Canada. It's a big part of my salvation story. Um, I didn't quite get saved in Canada. Nobody told me the gospel there, but I nearly, uh, I nearly committed suicide in Canada. And uh, the Lord had to send me to a Buddhist country, Thailand, and that's where uh, a bunch of ex-Buddhists told me about Jesus. But uh, I remember, you know, fondly wow. uh, my time in Canada. Amazing. So I've got to get back there sometime and and redeem all those uh, those years of worldliness in Canada. Uh, so I've wow. gone back. So you were once. into Buddhism, yeah. is that right? You were really following that. Was was that your sort of choice of religion? So I wore a cross and a Buddha on the same neck. Um, I had Catholics, Buddhists, Methodists, and Muslims in my family living in the same house. So that was my training in uh, religion. Uh, growing up so i wrote a book about it called from buddha to jesus it helps a lot of people especially if you don't know how to reach out to the buddhists uh, it helps a lot of people to reach out to them to understand how to build right. bridges with them talk to them it's not so hard so are you are you still doing an online church then that that reaches to australia or are you centered now in the united states so we have a physical church in australia and we have a physical church in florida and we have an online church so yes, 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 okay. all the other, we are not <laughs> okay. slowing down. We are speeding up. There's so much to wow. do. So many people get afraid about the end times and they want to check out, you know, mentally and spiritually. But I, I think you and I know it's just more and more to do. And the Lord is going to increase the responsibility on those that are listening to him because he's trying to raise up kings and priests to co-reign with him. We're not supposed to just check out. When Jesus came the first time, boy, that increased the work of the believers, didn't it? They were sitting there in Israel, not taking the gospel to the world. That's part of their disobedience. They were meant to be lights to the Gentiles, but they just sat on it and said, we're God's chosen people. And the Lord came and said, hey, wake up, time to time to work. And finally, we went out to most countries in the world, still trying to finish the job that he gave in his first coming. You imagine the second coming, how much more work it's going to be. So we are about our father's business. Mm -hmm. We're going to be uh, spreading the gospel online, physically. Wow. Traveling, I've been in about 15 states in just uh, in the past like four weeks. 15 states, and we just keep going. You you are uh, really busy doing. You are occupying until he comes, and I love that. You've been really highlighting in some of your work April this April 8th eclipse, and the the word tells us to watch for signs in the heavens. Is there anything that you can tell us that you correlate? Uh, you know, I've already talked about a bunch of stuff is going on. In fact, there's even uh, there's five um, planets that are you know going to be aligning as well, but. So I think this is you here in, in uh, the big church, uh, actually speaking in person, not just online. But what, are you, what do you have to say about what we're going to see in the heavens coming up? First of all, we have to thank God that he loves America and Canada so much that he gave this sign. There's 192 countries in the world. Uh, we get over the continental United States and Canada is included in this last sign. Um, three solar eclipses that spell, and first of all, an X, which everybody knows marks a spot, but X is also the cross. It's the top, the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's a sign of the end. It spells the Aleph, which is uh, the bull. Um, it's the bull that gets sacrificed. So the bull, the sacrificial animal on the cross represents Jesus. But it just goes on and on. It's just, it's endless. I don't know how many things uh, I can say. You were mentioning the Jubilee. I, I wanted to pick up on that. You mentioned so many things I can pick up on. But yes. if there was any nation on earth that was founded on the principle of liberty, which is uh, in the Bible, by the way, you're to proclaim liberty at every Jubilee, it's the United States. So the United States is a Jubilee country. And guess what? It has how many states? 50 states. Um, Jubilee is a town that's going to be at the end of this 
solar eclipse, uh, Path of Totality. It's a town three miles of the last Nineveh that it crosses, the town of Jubilee. Uh, the, first Ju the first solar eclipse that came in 2017 in August, uh, it occurred in the fifth Jubilee cycle of the Jubilee Nation. So if you count from 1776 and just go on every Jubilee, every Jubilee, um, it's in the fifth uh, Jubilee cycle. And the song, the, the anthem says, uh, for this country, God shed his grace on the five is the, the number of grace. Uh, the 2024 eclipse occurs as Israel is engaged in its first major war in 50 years, in another jubilee. 50 years ago, in 1973, the Yom Kippur War began on the Day of Atonement. Um, you were mentioning in my bio a bunch of stuff. I'm going to update it. So I, I have been to uh, 50 countries, so that's a jubilee. And this year is my jubilee year. So even speaking as a prophet, everything just lines up 50, 50, 50, 50 everywhere. Um, and, but it just goes on and on. There's a comet that's coming as well at the same time. It's already here. Um, the two paths of the solar eclipses crosses seven Salem's in the beginning of 2017. Then it crosses seven Salem's again. Now it crosses 11 Nineveh's. I've counted it. I've, I've shown it. The picture that you showed there was from um, the Brownsville Revival pastor. So many people know the last great revival in America happened for five years at Pensacola, Florida. And that pastor, Pastor John Kilpatrick, led another revival that's less known in Alabama. And now he's got the, that very wonderful church in Alabama. So I thought, well, what an amazing thing. I just arrived in America and the pastor and the team and the worshipers that were in the last revival, they were the ones that had me preach and they had me preach five times. Uh, people who were there, especially ministers, said they've never seen anyone invited five times uh, at the same church there. But it's just a confirmation. We want to be in the middle of revival. We're sent here to be part of a great awakening. And we're going to go to all 50 states, maybe Canada as well, uh, because we believe it's not the end yet. I know a lot of the watchers, they, they're hoping it's the rapture on April 8th. I don't think that's what it means. OK, uh, it's not the second coming on April 8th. That's not where we're at. But it is a sign to the United States and to Canada that this is now we're in the end time. OK, we're in, I believe in Revelation chapter six and we are to now stop being so worldly and lukewarm and to start obeying the Lord. OK, if you're not obeying the Lord, you've really got a limited time to put your life in order because that eclipse that you're showing right there, an eclipse is a sign of judgment on the Gentiles. When it came in August 7, uh, 21st, 2017, there was the costliest natural disaster in American history. It was called Hurricane Harvey. Some people think it's Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Harvey beat Hurricane Katrina in terms of the dollar uh, damages that it did. So that sign was absolutely confirmed. So the only question now is, this is not a pagan celebration to all be going out to look at the eclipse and celebrate. This is a warning from God same as was given in Nineveh in 763 BC. It's a warning from God that judgment is pending. So not the rapture, not the second coming. Judgment is pending. Why and what kind of judgment? That's what we can theorize about. But it's coming. Wow. And, and so I understand that this eclipse of all things is basically uh, going to be going over two cities called Nineveh. 11. I counted 11 and a lot of people don't have the oh. right count. So I'm, I'm going to read it to you. Nineveh, Texas, yes. Nineveh, Missouri, Indiana, Ohio, two in Pennsylvania, Virginia, New York, Nova Scotia twice. And there is a misspelled Nineveh. This is why people don't get it right. Nineveh spelled with an A-H instead of E-H in Kentucky. So you look at all that. That's 11. So 11, by the way, is the number of chaos. You mentioned Jonathan Kahn singled out that date, January 20th. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, March 11, and then yes. I forget the year that you said, but again, a 70. lot of things happened with 11, 1970, because 11 is the number of chaos. So I love numbers like you do, like Jonathan Kahn. I wrote the book called The Divine Code, and 11 is fascinating because 12 is order. 12 minus 1, you take away 1, and you and you get disorder, okay? So in that volume, there's two volumes because we take a, we take a look at 1,000 numbers. So whatever your favorite number is, you'll find it in the book. And uh, 11 comes up all the time 
11 comes up because of chaos and 22 will come up again and again because 22 number of end times number of chapters in revelation number of letters in the hebrew alphabet uh, just constantly associated with uh, end times it's absolutely um you know it's really amazing at this hour where we're seeing a lot of very bad things happen in our world much the same as nineveh was experiencing um and and if it is a time of god's judgment what do you think that god's unhappy with like if you were to look at america and, and what's going on and in canada we're just the same if not worse what is god telling us to look at well this is my message you you you're uh, giving me an open door for my message here because it's absolutely clear what God is unhappy about. It's injustice. And I think Christians are not aware enough and not responsive enough to the fact that Psalm 37 says the Lord loves justice. It doesn't say that the Lord loves our favorite message and whatever our favorite message is. You know, we like grace and mercy and um, blessings upon us. And all of that is, is true. It's partially true. But what does the Lord love? Psalm 37 says, "He, the Lord loves justice. And so what does he hate? He hates injustice. And you see with the, you know, the trucker caravan or convoy and the way that Canada debanked people who were peacefully protesting, these are injustices. Why? Because they break the Ten Commandments. You're, you're stealing from people, right? Theft is breaking the Eighth Commandment. So our politicians have forgotten the Ten Commandments and the Word of God, but guess what? They're still accountable to God, no matter how many times they deny Him, no matter how much they want to say that they, uh, He's irrelevant, they stand before Him and answer to Him for everything they do in their lives. And they've committed grave injustices. The biggest issues going on in the States is injustice. Injustice against the unborn is what the church is aware of. And so that's why we have a lot of power and a lot of unity in the area of fighting against abortion because we're so united the issue of justice unites everybody every denomination and, and because it's about the second coming it's the very heart and crux of the message of the end times why is jesus coming back every church and every denomination knows the answer to that the lord is coming not to grow your ministry not to plant another good church not to have another uh, worship service he's coming back to execute justice and the sooner we cooperate with the times and the seasons of justice and with the anointing and the authority of justice, the more uh, favor and the more blessing we'll experience. So those who are veering off and, and not caring about justice, they'll lose their children. What do the children go to? They go to social justice, climate justice, racial justice. Um, but that's what God's unhappy with. In, in uh, my opinion, America has become a land of injustice, exporting injustice, internationally causing wars breaking treaties and promises it's happening with russia right now and uh it's happening in latin america for for decades and hundreds of years and it's happening in in uh, canada where people are jailed you know you have that you have pastor arthur Pulowski, who was arrested in a, such a despicable way on the highway um, treated worse than rapists that's an injustice and when you impose cruel and unusual punishments on people like president donald trump and you find him $400 million, even if they bring it down, they said they brought it down. Um, it's just cruel and unusual. So once we understand that we are agents of justice, we'll understand why has God chosen certain people that we may not like the way they are? Why has he chosen Donald Trump? Because he's called to be an agent of justice. That's what my book is about, by the way, behind me is uh, Trump's unfinished business. He gave me that title before the last election and the results of it. And the Lord uh, told me it would be unfinished. I just wasn't smart enough to know unfinished meant really unfinished. I thought he would come back right away and finish it. But the Lord said, no, it's unfinished. And the subtitle there is 10 Prophecies to Save America. The agenda is to save America. It's not to let it go, not to call it Babylon and say it's over. We are here as agents of justice to bring leadership uh, to this nation and to Canada as well. And to save this nation. It shouldn't be run by these heathens. Um, if Christians refuse to be involved in politics, then then who do you want to run your country? You want pagans and heathens and antichrists? Because it's not the time for them yet. It's our time. Wow. And, you know, you're bringing up um, a, a topic that's very important to me. And, and that is how 
how did we fail and what can we do differently moving forward? Because at the end of the show, after I've let you go, I'm going to show how they really celebrated um, Ramadan in certain parts of the globe. And we're seeing this, that, that Muslims are pouring a lot of money into what they believe in. And we have maybe been taking a back ride saying, oh, we're in the land of plenty, you know, founded on Judeo-Christian values, North America, you know, given to God. And we've kind of maybe not been attentive to what was happening. Yeah, well, we abdicated our role. The founding fathers were very active in every, in every level of society. And we slowly got, you know, we didn't really get pushed back. We pushed ourselves into a corner and we, we ourselves preach this lie of separation of church and state. It's like saying separation of God and the rest of the creation that he owns. He owns the universe. He owns the country. He owns everything. And there's no uh, mandate in the Bible where he has to be pushed into a corner or marginalized. He has the right to speak and to impose any standard that is uh, righteous and just on the schools, on uh, the, the law, uh, on the government, on the media. And because we're not following God anymore, the devil comes in and fills all those vacuums. So we abdicated it. You know, marriage, marriage was a thing that was uh, uniquely, exclusively a uh, religious territory, right? You didn't need a law, a secular law to define marriage because it's already defined by God in the Bible. There would be no reason for marriage other than God created Adam and Eve and he bound them together. So we abdicated that. And so we gave it to the civil authority and one by one, piece by piece, we gave the schools. We wanted everyone to be educated and be literate so they can read the Bible. But then the public schools took over that. Uh, we have the most righteous law, but we gave it to the secular courts and they even define and, and perform marriages and divorces. It should have been done in the church. So slowly, because we abdicated the whole subject of justice, that's why we have no more power and we even say you know what even the whole subject of justice is no longer god's it, it belongs to the government so then we beg and plead and protest for our rights please let us have free speech please let us have gatherings and pray uh in a in a sports game oh please allow us well forget it they're never going to agree with you they're committed uh heathens and satanists and atheists they have their minds are completely darkened so we need to tell the church to wake up. And that's what the great awakening is. And there'll be a remnant. It won't be everybody, but you don't need everybody. Uh, the statistic was the American Revolutionary War was, was won on the participation of something like two to 5% of the US population or the American population. So the majority of people were not involved. So that does not matter. We just gotta be on the right side and God will anoint us and we are on the winning team. Amen. Um, some, I mean, it's interesting that the Lord is really highlighting this. So when you say 12 cities of Nineveh will be affected by this uh, eclipse, I mean, it, it's absolutely an extraordinary event that's happening and should point us to, to seeing this, this message by God to repent and, and to awaken. Also, there's a planetary alignment on April 4th that will be most visibly seen. I have it on a share there, JT, but planetary alignment 2024. So, so apparently, this is saying that uh, planetary alignments are beautiful. The next planetary alignment is on April 4th to make sure you find every, oh, planet, blah, 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 blah. So um, down here, it basically says that... Um, Venus, Neptune, Saturn, and Mars uh, will also all be aligned. You know, the word of God says that in the last days, God will put signs in the heavens, that he will show us things so that we are not unaware. I think the worst thing that we're that Christians have been fearing, I grew up in a church always talking about the thief in the night. We are never going to know. But I, as I got older, I found out that that actually the Bible said, no, Jesus and the, the Holy Spirit, the word of God has told us many signs so that we are aware of the season. Yeah, he actually holds us accountable. And that scripture is uh, sometimes misquoted. He said after that, and we are not the children of darkness, but we are the children of light, lest that day would overtake us. So we're not supposed to be totally asleep. In fact, the Lord rebukes 
the five virgins who were asleep at his coming. Um, now, let me go back to the signs, because I know there's a lot of New Agers and, and people who are celebrating this like it's a pagan thing. These things align only with the biblical calendar. And that means both the Old Testament and the New Testament, both the Jewish and the Christian. How so? April 8th, uh, the solar eclipse comes on the eve of the new religious calendar. The new, so the religious calendar in the Bible is Nisan 1. So they don't go by January to December, all right? Their first month on the religious calendar is Nisan, right? It's the month where Jesus uh, comes, presents himself as the lamb, gets crucified. Nisan 1, it's a new beginning, just like the Aleph Tav. It's a new beginning. It's God's reset. It's not Klaus Schwab's reset. It's God's reset starts. And he says, new beginning, first day of the year on my calendar, April 8th. That's the eve. Then if it's the sign of Jonah, because there was a solar eclipse before Jonah uh, entered Nineveh and then preached. That's why there's all these Ninevehs, 11 of them, by the way. 11 is chaos, 12 is order. Jonah goes in. There was a, two plagues before he came one solar eclipse and one great earthquake that's why i think there might be a great earthquake at the madrid fault line uh in the middle of the united states where the mississippi is so april 8th if it's the sign of jonah what did jonah say to nineveh jonah said yet 40 days yet 40 days that means you got only 40 days left and nineveh will be destroyed so if it's the same i looked it up i said okay what does that mean if i'm to tell people god is real only Christianity, only the Bible's right because the sun, moon, and stars don't obey Buddhism or Hinduism. They don't care at all. So if you're looking for, for God, here's a shortcut. The God who made the sun, moon, and stars is the real God. And you should know at least that. And his sun, moon, and stars obey his word, the Bible, and no other religious book. So you count 40 days taken from the word of God, 40 days from the sign of Jonah. Where do you arrive? May 18, the eve of Pentecost. So you've got the religious new year on the Hebrew calendar, the Jews calendar. Then you got the day of Pentecost, which is so many things. It's when the Ten Commandments was, was given. It's when the Holy Spirit descended upon the 120 believers. It's when the, uh, the birth of the church happened. And right on that day, again, another new beginning. God says, I've given you 40 days to think about this, to get your life in order, to repent. So what will happen next? That's judgment. Unless we repent, you know, Nineveh did repent from the top down. The king all the way down repented. I have no um, expectation that Biden's going to repent. He's gone the other way. He's gone off the deep end where he's declared uh, Easter uh, Transgender Visibility Day, right? It's It should be Jesus Visibility Day. It's the day to be noticing Jesus and beholding and adoring him. He alone died on the cross for our sins. He alone rose again for our justification. And yet they want to talk about transgender visibility. They're not persecuted at all. In, in America, everybody lives by having the same equal rights. But he's not going to repent. So at the end of 40 days, you, you're not going to find repentance from the top down. I don't think you're going to find all the churches in unison and agreeing. But you will find a remnant. And this is what I believe will lead into the next election. That the remnant of people who are fighting for freedom and believe the Bible is the standard for our living and for eternity these people will get into power and Trump will come back in with a, uh, in a landslide. I, I am so uh, looking forward to what happens because in my heart of hearts, uh, I, I believe that. And, and so we pray for that to happen. You know that they're going to, you know, do everything that they can. But do you believe that that the Lord's going to give us a season where we can see this justice return? Because a lot of people say, well, you know, like revelations, it gets so bad and they're going to kill all the Christians. And, you know, so how, how do you line it up with where we are um, according to prophecy? OK, so I go through that in detail. Like I literally can do each horse of Revelation for an hour or more. I do the book of Revelation in 12 hours. So just chapter <laughs> six, we can also do its own six hours. So I, I'm summarizing and it's going to be a lot of questions for people. Okay. But let, let me summarize. Uh, can you state it again, the question, so I can try to... Pinpoint? Sure, like where we are, where we are in, uh, in this season with biblical prophecy, uh, all of the horsemen and all of that. Um, some people say COVID was perhaps one of the first uh, birth pangs, you know, of the end. But how do you see it? Okay, so let me, let me answer about the fear first, and then uh, let's come back to the white horse and COVID. 
Um, the moment you say that word, you know, you get censored. I do. I get censored uh, all the time. I can see the unfairness of how big tech puts its hand on on the scale and tries to influence elections. So we, we get censored when we say certain words. But concerning the fear, um, don't believe Hollywood movies too much. All right. Well, tribulation means tribulation. That's when the tough times come. We are in pre-tribulation. So pre-tribulations are birth pangs. They're signs. The water hasn't broken contractions are going and you're just getting the signal that we're getting close to all the things the bible predicted but it doesn't mean that all life stops no not not at all life will continue and in fact if you want to if you want me to locate a timeline for the listeners i believe that the next three years will be the time of the greatest transfer of wealth and i'm not a prosperity preacher i rarely talk about um well i never talk about send me money and you'll be rich ever i never ever talk about such things but there is a prophecy in james about the transfer of wealth and it talks about the wealth of the sinner and the wicked is laid up is stored up for the end time harvest not just to be consumed on more houses and more cars and more holidays it's supposed to be used for the lord's kingdom i believe these next three years is the greatest transfer of wealth that it's already started it's time to then store up just like Joseph. Joseph told Pharaoh, you have seven years. I'm telling the audience, you don't have seven years. You have three years. And at the end of that, you'll get the, the global famine, global engineered famine, global depression. So you don't have the dollar collapse now. You don't have the CBDC's digital dollar now. I know everyone's anticipating it, but in what I've studied, and I, this is all my life, I study this every day, uh, it's not yet the time. So that's good news. But three years is not a long time. If you're an adult, three years is a short, very, very short time. It might seem long for a teenager, but that's a very short time for an adult. So we have to be very busy. For instance, in three years, the Lord told me to get to all 50 states, to preach this message of biblical justice to all 50 states. Most pastors are not aware of this. I can help them, but most pastors are not. You know, I the only pastor in Canada that has a standing invitation for me is Pastor Arthur Pulowski, and maybe I'll have to He's get up there friend. to Calgary, but uh, we're going to make it. But three years is a short time to go to all 50 states. We're, we're going to get you here. Actually, we will find a way uh, to do that. And I know the a church uh, that we could have you um, and host you in Canada. We want this message. What is it that's giving you the... Um, the biblical reference that it's this next three years. Why do you think it's this time? Okay, well, let's turn to the Word of God. Let me get my Bible. Okay. And um, let's have a look, okay? So we'll go back to your question about um, the unspeakable uh, enemy. That's yeah. what Trump called it, right? The, yes. Uh, the enemy, the little, the little microscopic enemy. It says in Revelation chapter 3, uh, sorry, in chapter 6, okay, so these are pre-tribulation signs. For those who haven't heard my teaching before, they can go to YouTube and catch up. But the main teaching for the past 40, 50 years is that Revelation 6 is part of the tribulation. I'm trying to correct this model in a very minute, small way. I'm not saying people are wrong. I'm just saying take that out of the tribulation because you've got seven, uh, three sets of sevens, the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls. Why would you put, why would you cram the seven seals and the seven trumpets into the first three and a half years? Then you have the seven bowls in the next three and a half years. And this is how everybody's teaching it. It lacks symmetry. It doesn't agree with the pre-tribulation signs Jesus preached on in Matthew 24 and Luke 21. So just for now, if you haven't studied it, take that as pre-tribulation signs and now watch what it means, right? If you take the blinders off, suddenly you'll see. Now, when I saw when the lamb opened the, one of the seals and I heard one of the four living creatures saying, come with a voice like thunder, come and see. And I looked and behold, here's the clue, a white horse. And he who sat on it had a bow and a crown was given to him and he went out conquering and to conquer. So we get a few different clues here, a few different hints. Very easy. We're to look for somebody that's wearing white. Okay wearing white well who wears white i guess people mm -hmm. at weddings uh, the bride wears white but i don't think the bride is going to come and go conquer the world she's going to go and have a nice honeymoon uh, another profession really that wears white is the pharmaceutical medical industry it's the universal language um, uh, of symbol of that profession they have to wear white even in commercials when they're just actors 
I have uh, photos. I, I don't want to say who yet because it gets it will get you in trouble on YouTube. So I won't say the person's name. But uh, so this person wears white. Then he's given a bow. The, the word bow in the Hebrew, I'm uh, sorry, in the Greek here, Greek text in the New Testament is toxon. Now, you, that word is familiar to us because toxon is where we get the English word toxic or toxicology. So here's the ancient uh, armory. Back in those days, they had a bow. Now, you hear American preachers for ages and ages say he has a bow, but he doesn't have an arrow. That makes no sense. He has a bow. The arrow is part of the equipment. And then they shoot your en their enemies. The trouble is when the arrow hits the target, they found out in ancient warfare, people don't just die. It's, it's pretty hard to kill people. There are people who have been shot and stabbed multiple times. They don't die. So imagine one arrow. It doesn't kill the enemy. They learned you must dip the arrow, take something sharp, dip it in toxon, which is the poison. And then you shoot the arrow and the arrow delivers the poison through the person's skin through something sharp. So somebody has white on, has something sharp that pierces the skin and then delivers a toxon. Now, in case you still are clueless, you don't wow. know what it is. God is so nice. He says, well, by the way, this person is given a corona in Latin, corona. I was in El Salvador, Honduras. I said, please read that again. What was he given? They said, corona. I said, what was the pandemic? What was the virus? And all the pastors, I preach to pastors a lot and I lead them. I love pastors. They need encouragement. They need courage to do what, what I'm doing. And I said, what, what's the pandemic based on? What virus? And every jaw dropped because even in Spanish, can you imagine? You're reading it in Spanish. It says plain as day, Corona, and they never saw it. And they lived through three and a half years of it. Now, here's the answer to your question. I said, everybody knows exactly how long this pandemic lasted. January 2020 all the way to June 2023, when all international travel bans were lifted. So God's like giving Bible prophecy to Bible dummies, right? You don't even have to read the Bible to understand. Clearly, this has been fulfilled. I don't have to interpret this for you. Who went out conquering the whole world? Now, this is the whole world. He rode out to conquer the world. There has been no event, including World War I, World War II, where anybody conquered the whole world. World War I, World War II were divided into factions, at least two, and it was not clear who's going to win. The only global event in human history, the last one, was Noah's flood. And, the, and then the latest one is the pandemic, the unspeakable pandemic. So now we know from that it lasted exactly three and a half years. God made it to start in January. That way you can count so clearly because three and a half years is a segment of time that is repeated. You can't say that it's only for the tribulation because Jesus ministered three and a half years. We know that the Antichrist will also, uh, you know, try to rule the world and control people through surveillance and drones and all this stuff, social credit system for three and a half years. So apparently this three and a half years is not just once or twice, but it's three and four and five and six times. So now we got the white horse for three and a half years. If the pattern holds up, the red horse is three and a half years. So you go and look. I came up with uh, when I found this out, I realized the Lord said, this is it in my spirit. I went on YouTube. You look at the date, October 6. And I said, war is imminent. War is about to start because it's the time of the red horse. October 7 happened. Now, you never get any credit. You say anything that doesn't happen right away, they call you a false prophet. You say something that happens right away, and they say it's fluke or accident. You know, yeah. they'll never, never, ever listen. If they're blind, they're hard to please. So you said it October 6th? October 6th, yeah. I was absolutely compelled in my spirit that I had to deliver this so that people would know this is the Lord getting attention. Wow. Right? It's not to say that I always get everything right. No, I, I don't claim that. But the Lord wants it's in fact, it's so easy now. Prophecy gets fulfilled almost instantly. Uh, you sow, you reap almost instantly. You pray, you almost get the answers instantly. if You know how to pray. Everything is like confirming the Bible, the Bible, not the Tao Te Ching, not the Tripitaka of the Buddhists. No, uh, not the Quran. The Bible is true. That's the message. The message is not to go worship the sun, moon and stars, but the, to, to worship the one who created them because he created us and we straight away. We're so far gone. We're, we're suffering and we're filled with injustice. And he says the only person who can correct that is the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Why? 
he suffered injustice. He suffered the worst injustice way beyond any of us because he's innocent. We suffer because we're guilty. He suffered innocently and he took our sin and the payment for our, our mistakes on himself so we can have a new start. That's Easter, by the way. We're on Easter Monday. Congratulations. You can have a new start today by putting your trust in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's what three years from because we are already half a year into the red horse. So if this is right, I could be wrong. So all we have to do is if, if in the next three years, it's a time of great peace. They broker peace. They have no war. Uh, they kiss and make up in Israel, uh, you know, which happened, right? I mean, Israel hasn't had a major war in 50 years. But at the time of the Red Horse, the next major war came. And I have a lot to say about Gaza as well. That's not probably another topic. But we're in that time. So the, only, the way to prove me wrong, the way to falsify this theory is to say in three years, you know what? We had peace on earth. Everything was great. Pastor Steve was wrong. But I'm afraid to say that everything is right now confirming war and more war. Ukraine and Russia were poking the eye of the bear over and oh. over. and We're pushing Putin into a corner. He's probably got more running a more Christian country than us. They illegalize homosexual propaganda over there. They uphold traditional marriage and values over there. They don't persecute the church like Ukraine does. Ukraine shuts people up. It, it, it shuts churches down and shuts journalists into prison and shuts political parties. They don't have elections over there. How can we even defend the fact that we're sending billions of dollars for democracy? It's an absolute propaganda lie. So if we're in the red horse and it's repeating the pattern in the white horse, we got three and a half years. What's the next horse? The black horse is when a loaf of bread costs a day's wage. So how much do you earn in a day? You earn what? A hundred? 200, 500, whatever your level of income, it's going to cost just about that much for to feed yourself and, and who, however many in your family, one loaf of bread. That means we're going into extreme hyperinflation and an engineered global famine. And when you study what's going on around the world, you can see they are preparing for this engineered famine. The good news that I have is if you're listening today, you believe the Bible you're going to act on it. You have three years to prepare yourself. Get into a community. You will not survive this on your own. You will not stock up enough long life food to survive. When the mobs are hungry, they will tear down your walls. You got a gun. It won't be enough. Your one gun and say a mob of 20 or 50 or 100, you're not going to be able to last it. And we've seen these mobs in India. They're persecuting Christians right now. And I support Christians. Our ministry supports Christians in India. And we get firsthand videos and firsthand photos of them raping, uh, hacking, killing Christians, burning their houses and churches. That's what's coming. The West can never imagine that coming. But eventually that will come. The third seal is the black horse. And that is a global engineered famine. So I'm calling the, you know, sounding the alarm. It's not yet. And it's not going to be the worst. What will not be the worst. The worst is after we're gone during the tribulation. So if you want to be here in the tribulation, ignore Jesus. If you want to escape and be with Jesus, then you must make sure that you belong to him and your sins have been washed and paid for by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Okay, so let me just go over a couple of, uh, of things. So you're saying uh, that the this death, um, this uh, so this would be the fourth living creature, that would be your thinking when we've all actually left and, and perhaps the Lord has returned or the rapture has taken place, the rapture. No, um, the Bible is very clear about this and it's, it's plain as day. We just don't want to read it because we got our own, you know, end time uh, models that we okay. are committed to. But the, the Bible says this at the end of the sixth seal. Look at what it says. It says at the end of the sixth seal, remember, everybody who teaches this believes that the majority who teaches this believes that the seals are tribulation. But he, notice the end of the chapter, what it says. All these people, okay, let's take up from verse 15. The kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man. Okay, a slave is, you know, we have more slaves today than ever before. And a lot of employees and people who owe money to the banks. They're a kind of slave. They hid themselves in the caves, in the rocks of the mountains, and they said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath, wrath of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. 
for the great day of his wrath has come. So what does that mean? His wrath had not started. So why did we put the seals in the tribulation timeline? It says it plain as day. It has not started. It just started. The tribulation is just about to start. Now we have the wow. kind of the curious thing about uh, seal number seven, because it takes it takes a couple of chapters to get to it. You know, we got seal number, uh, sorry, chapter number seven. It transfers over to talk about a subject, the 144,000, which the Jehovah Witnesses obviously don't qualify for. Um, and it's not <laughs> even in the right timeline, right? Yeah. So when you don't know the timeline, you jumble up the scriptures. We're not in chapter seven. We're in chapter six. So don't put yourself in chapter seven. If you do, you're following a cult. So you go through all that chapter seven. And then you got to get to chapter eight when he opens the seventh seal. And it says there was silence in heaven for about an hour. Why does it shift to heaven? Because that's when the rapture had happened. Mm. So why is there silence? Because rather than we are, as soon as you, you and I get up to heaven, you know what? We're going to be so ecstatic. We're going to be celebrating. We made it. We <laughs> made it. Hallelujah. And then suddenly Amen. the gravity of the situation dawns on us. The worst things. We've gone through some bad things. But much worse, the worst is about to fall upon our families and friends that refuse to believe all the solar eclipses, the signs, the plain teaching of the word, all the YouTube preachers that told you believe in Jesus before it's too late. They ignored all that. And Satan is going to have his day against humanity. Mm. And so there's silence because we are also, we're appreciating the fact that we're up there. But I think we're reflecting on the fact that bad things are about to happen for those who did not escape. So mm. the timeline works very well if you just let the Bible speak for itself. I know that people get hung up on one word, come up hither, which is in chapter four, the beginning of chapter four. You can't build a doctrine on three words, which does not say anything other than John, please come up hither. I want to show you something. Never does it say the church came up hither. It says here the church has disappeared. It says here uh, the tribulation has just started in plain words. His wrath has come. Then it says, I'm going to shift the scene to heaven. Why do we ignore this part? Wow. Wow, that is really uh, such a weight of gravity. And now people are asking on the feed, where can they see your uh, your YouTube videos, I guess? are you? Is it under your name? Okay, it's hard to spell my name. So just remember Discover <laughs> Ministries, Discover, okay. not Discovery, Discover Ministries. However, may I encourage uh, our Canadian friends and American friends, YouTube censors us. So we cannot, like this, we cannot put this on fully on YouTube, they will, they will strike or they will flag, you know, I don't know what happens with your channel, but they, it happens with us. So the, our full, we'll just sermon, ask everyone, we'll just say right now that everyone on YouTube, you need to head over to rumble, uh, to backslash Laura Lynn, Tyler Thompson. It should be there in your YouTube description, right? Let's head on over there right now and go ahead and continue pastor. Yeah. And, and then, um, the, the place to come into our online church community, which thank you, you mentioned that we started this long before COVID, the Lord directed me to 